If you've already had a facelift or you're contemplating having a facelift, I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step recovery process that is necessary to arrive at a great outcome. I don't want you to cut any corners because it may compromise your final result. I'm Dr. Joel Kopelman. For those who don't know me, I'm a facial plastic surgeon. I've been doing facelifts a long time. I'm going to go through the recovery process with you so that you know what to anticipate day by day, certainly in the immediate post-op period, and then long term what to anticipate as well. So that you don't feel anxious about uh, what's going on. We want you to feel confident that everything is moving forward in a very uh, expected way. Day one, immediately following surgery, you're obviously going to wake up groggy. You're going to have minimal or no discomfort associated with the surgery. You're going to feel maybe a little numb, a little swollen. There's going to be a wrap around your head and uh, I never put on the wrap too tightly because it'll inhibit some of the swelling uh, from actually dissipating. So uh, some people wrap tightly and you get really swollen here, but I don't believe that compression uh, from, the, from the head dressing is really going to stop any uh, significant oozing. I do believe that uh, the head dressing just cushions your head uh, when you're resting at home. As far as resting, you must recognize that you're gonna to need to sleep and just kick back your heels for a couple days because you're not going to do a lot. You're going to need somebody with you 24-7 for the first three days, whether that's a friend or a family member. Why that is necessary is that you need assistance going into the shower. You have to have someone stand there and make sure you don't get faint. We want you to shower with lukewarm water, not hot water, because it may make you lightheaded. We also want somebody to help you retrieve any food or medication that you might need and without getting out of bed and stumbling. So especially the first two days, that's important. On the third day, you're already going to start feeling much better and you're going to start moving around. So following surgery, you're going to have two drains that are woven from behind your ear, under the skin, down into your neck. One goes deep within the beneath the muscle and one goes superficially beneath the skin. The reason why we put these drains in is it, it sucks away any blood tinge fluid that may collect down there in your neck. And it also prevents what's called a seroma, which is sometimes sometimes occurs, which is a yellow fluid that it kind of accumulates under the muscle and the skin and can create bogginess to the skin. I leave these drains in for about three to five days, depending upon what I see in the bulb. There's a little um, uh, bulb syringe over here that we uh, use to suck away any of that fluid. And I look and we monitor that, the amount of fluid coming out every day so that uh, if there's no more fluid coming out, then I can remove the drain. But it, it is a little annoying, a little uh, kind of uh, unsettling to have this, this drain in under your neck. It doesn't choke you or anything, but you feel it underneath the skin and that may uh, disturb you a little bit. But again, I'm talking to you so you can anticipate any of these things that may occur following the procedure and so that you're not uh, unwound by the, the sensations that you feel. So as we're talking about different sensations, we have to talk about the sensation of numbness. Numbness is a normal uh, feeling after surgery because as we undermine the skin, it, it dis disrupts some of those sensory nerves in there and that may take uh, up to three months to recover. In most cases, it, it, the, the sensation to the skin comes back sooner, but it may take three or maybe even six months before the sensation comes back fully. Some of you may experience some pain or discomfort. Usually that's easily taken care of by uh, the use of extra strength Tylenol. Sometimes we use Celebrex and sometimes we use uh, a Tylenol mixed with narcotic. I try to avoid anything with narcotics, however, because I don't want you to get nauseated following the procedure and end up having to heave or, or vomit. 
So we don't want anything that is going to disturb the surgery uh, following the procedure. So we try to avoid any narcotics and try to give you non-narcotic analgesics uh, to uh, dissipate any discomfort. Usually it's not that uncomfortable. You're going to feel a sense of tightness in the neck as well. And that tightness, of course, is just because we're putting the muscle bellies together and, and suturing them together and, you know, doing a dissection underneath the muscle or maybe even removing a portion of the salivary glands. But, but all of that is going to dissipate. Within a few days, you're going to feel much more comfortable than on day one or day two. You also may find that you have difficulty opening your mouth. So that's, of course, a normal uh, outcome of the procedure as well. We're doing a lot of manipulation under the skin, near the muscles, and so that may occur immediately following the procedure and last for a few days. And while we're talking about your mouth, we want to talk about your diet. I recommend that you eat soft foods for the first three to four days, and that includes uh, yogurt, eggs, a soft bread, we don't want you to use anything that, where you have to crunch down or use uh, your jaw to chew on, on heavy food. So no steak, no apples, and etc. So just recognize in the first couple days it's going to be soft diet, uh, after which you can progress back to your normal diet. My philosophy about using cold compresses is that I do believe that cold compresses help significantly in reducing swelling as well as reducing the metabolism of the tissues which can then uh, uh, decrease inflammation and help the acceleration of the, of the healing process. So the cold compresses are either uh, bags of uh, ice peas or cold uh, or ice in, in Ziploc bags or sometimes I recommend a continuous flow a cooling device mask which we rent and we put on the face uh, for the first two or three days. After which, if there's any bruising that's there, particularly if you've had fat grafting, you're going to see some bruising because of the, uh, the fat grafting is done uh, in several points. Uh, you're going to, that bruising can be uh, uh, diminished uh, with uh, warm compresses. So initially it's cold and then we switch over to warm compresses to uh, reduce some of that bruising. So f following the first day when you've had your head wrapped with a large wrap around your head and your neck, uh, with, uh, which has cotton underneath the, the wrap to kind of cushion your face, my approach, maybe not your surgeon's approach, is to remove the wrap the following day. We leave the drains in, of course, and uh, then I apply this uh, Velcro strap around the patient's head, like so, so that they can't twist their neck in different directions because we don't want patients to move in an exaggerated ways, uh, which can uh, unwind, break the sutures, and break the attachments that we've made. So we want to, I use this as kind of a reminder to keep your head kind of in a, in a somewhat stiff uh, position so that when you're looking at things, your nose point towards the object that you're looking at rather than twisting your neck. So every day, incrementally, you're going to get better and better. The swelling is going to dissipate. The amount of drainage coming out of the tube, uh, which we monitor from how much fluid is in that little bulb attached to the tube, is going to go down and down and down. And by day three or four, it's, it's almost gone. Maybe we're, we're going to leave the tube in a little longer, depending on how much drainage there is. And your surgeon may decide, well, no drain is necessary at all. But in my experience, I have found draining the neck is definitely uh, necessary to avoid those seromas and, those sw and the accumulation of, of any blood tinge fluid, which leads to bruising of your neck and so forth. And I think it accelerates the healing process by getting rid of that fluid. So I do uh, endorse the idea of using drains and leaving them in for longer than a day or two. By day six or seven, the sutures are ready to come out. I believe that you should remove sutures by as early as you can, but as long as the, the wound is well healed. So by day six to seven, I think most of the sutures are going to are 
uh, going to come out. And those sutures are below your hair tuft, uh, along the front of your ear, behind this little structure called the tragus, around your earlobe and behind your ear, uh, camouflage behind the ear, and along the hairline back here. There's also a suture below your chin, uh, which we're also going to remove at day uh, six or seven. Uh, following that, I still want you to use your uh, headband um, because I want you to continue not to twist your neck uh, because, again, it will take a few weeks before the healing process is more complete beneath the tissues here so that you don't uh, inadvertently uh, break apart any of the sutures that we uh, placed during the procedure. You may see along uh, the cheek area that you see some irregularity and bumps. These will all dissipate over time. It may take weeks to months before these little bumps go away. Usually they do not persist and they, they dissipate over time. If you've had fat grafting in conjunction with your facelift, which is commonly uh, performed these days because many surgeons want to augment the volume of your face, not just pull and tighten your face, but augment the volume loss in the face, that fat grafting may take up to a year before things settle down. That doesn't mean you can't go out. You can wear makeup, you can, you're gonna look fine, but it may take an entire year before you really see the, what I call the final result. So be patient, don't be in a rush, don't get anxious, recognize there are, uh, there's a recovery process here that you all have to go through. As you come out of your surgery and, and you may take a look, glance in the mirror, I don't want you to get anxious. I don't want you to get depressed. I want you to recognize that everybody who's gone through a facelift goes through stages of recovery. And I hope I've elucidated these stages for you and hit upon most of the common things that can occur following a facelift. If you have any further questions, please leave them below, subscribe to my channel, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.